Hello, this is H.G. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Lunar 2! Today, we're going to be heading to Lionhead, but before I do that, I want to go over a couple changes I wanted to make here. Uh, first, I decided not to use the Black Dragon Quest, after all, because, I, unbeknownst to me, it's basically the same thing as the Solar Bomb ability that uh, I showed off with Lucia there, that prevents you from gaining experience, so that won't help me here. I also want to change the Tri-Ring to a noisy amulet there and give the Tri-Ring to Hero because also when I was practicing earlier today, I found out one of the enemies can also paralyze you as well as uh, some other enemies muting you. So yeah, Hero's going to need that help there. So okay, so let's head on over to the Lion Head. This is probably the hardest of the post-game dungeons actually. Which is one of the reasons why I wanted to do this after becoming obscenely overpowered. Because even then, it's going to be tricky. Now, if you haven't uh, picked up Lionhead on your pendant location list, well, basically, it's southeast of Neovane there. So, pretty easy to find your way here. Or you could go southwest of uh, Rakuli. That works, too. So, let's see what enemies they got around here. More mummies. Can never have enough mummies in JRPGs, huh? Okay, well, let's take them out. Okay, so we got the working stiffs. Those guys will always try to mute you or seal one of your characters. So you want to be careful for that. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to have Ronfar defend. Let's see. Gene attack the... Uh, mummy Lord there, where uh, if he's standing still, it'll just attack you normally. If it's hopping around, it'll attack with an AoE. But, if you kill the Mummy Lord, just like in the first dungeon of the game, all the other mummies go away. I'll take care of this. So basically, what I want to do is just survive the working stiffs there. It's a stiff! But yeah, you see, they're trying to mute us with their attacks. So, uh, just using your regular physical attacks along with Burning Rage, that'll be enough to take down the Mummy Lord, who has 1,500 HP. Holy cow, that's like more than some bosses. I think. Well, anyway, yeah, just go after the Mummy Lord, and that'll make this, well, as painless as possible. So, yeah, I'm getting a lot of experience in this area. In fact, actually, as far as the mandatory epilogue dungeons go, yeah, these guys are pretty tough. So, uh, just so you know, um, this is not a mandatory dungeon. But I'm doing it anyway because we can get some uh, more, more ultimate than ultimate gear. Nothing extraordinary here, though. I mean, I just want to take care of it. Okay, we got mutant turtles in the epilogue. I always knew they were behind this. Nazgard was warning me! Okay, so anyway, uh, we got Super Cyclone, because uh, the mutant turtles are strong against physical attacks, so we're not going to be able to take them out as easily as before. It's the other enemies, it is. Now, I'm going to have Jean attack the Working Stiffs, because, well, we don't have a Mummy Lord this time, so we're going to have to take him out the old-fashioned way. We're going to have Lamina use Catastrophe to damage the Turtles, and Leo to clean up whatever's left. Mega damage. So I don't think we're going to be able to kill the Mutant Turtles with, uh, what is it, with just Catastrophe and Super Cyclone. We'll be close, though. They got 800 HP. And fortunately, as obvious as, as it should be, they're pretty slow. So we should be able to take them out. Uh, I like that sound. Makes me feel powerful. Oh, by the way, with the uh, turtles here... You see it just sitting there, it attacks normally. If you see it like surging with electricity or something, then it's going to attack with an AoE. Uh, barely not enough, but uh, Leo should be able to finish it. Alright, good job. Man, those working stiffs. One time uh, they all just ganged up on Lamina. And, holy cow! They, they just took her out. 
Fortunately, I got double Chiro Crest, so that really helps us a lot. Mm, that bothers my OCD. Okay. Well, anyway, let's see. There's one more new enemy around here. And I'm not going to find it here. Okay. Let's see. Can I get all the way up there? Well, there's a turtle. Nuts. Okay. Took care of a couple of those guys. Shut up, mummy. Okay. So, when you see one of those eyes floating around here, probably want to save before taking it on. Although, well, I suppose it's not a big deal, but... Anyway, okay, so we got Dark Eyes. Fortunately, they're not nearly as annoying as the ones in Dragon Warrior 2. But anyway, so this guy is really, really, really tough to damage. So, we're going to have to use Instant Death to take it out. I was thinking about using Black Dragon Grief against it, but then we wouldn't get to reap the massive amount of experience that this guy gives you. Not as much as Chiro Mongrels, but still pretty good. Bang, you're dead. And you can meet up with them more reliably. So you just kill them, boom, we get over 22 grand of experience. Hooray! Okay, so that's all the new uh, standard enemies around here. So fortunately, because there's a lot of enemies to fight around here, I've already taken the time to kill them all off screen. So that'll make life much easier for us. On the first floor, or first four floors, say that three times fast, but yeah, they, uh, there's no treasure around here yet, so I'm just going to dash around to get to the next floor. I equipped the yellow pajama combo on uh, Ronfar there, so that way I could get through this much more quickly. So let's see, this one's in the lower right. There'd normally be enemies all around here. But I already took care of them. So ignore all the dead ends and everything that I'm not exploring right now because I already did that. I don't think there's any more enemies around here. And let's see, one more part to go through. wonder why they call this place Lionhead. I mean, besides the statue and all that. I mean, what's, what's so special about lions here? Eh, I don't know. But anyway, okay, so, let's take a look at this. All right, we get more, well, better headgear. So, all right, give that one to Lamina. And what we got to do here is kind of like in the Mystic Ruins, press the switch there, and the center room changes its formation a bit. And then we can go on, get the next treasure, and so on. Again, normally there would be enemies floating around here, but I already took care of them and reset the puzzle. So I didn't have to go through that all over again. Unfortunately, the Fantasy Ribbon does not give you protection from all status ailments. That's another game of yours. Ooh, nice. Okay, well, a little better on everything. All right. Well, almost everything. Fortunately, getting through this place is pretty straightforward. Kind of reminds me of... Uh, what was that? Uh, Link to the Past, one of those dungeons where they had spikes everywhere like that. Why Lun put his arm here, I don't know, but... Okay, that works. A little stronger there. Kind of also reminds... This room kind of reminds me of... Uh, what was it? That one puzzle in Dragon Quest V where they had those invisible spikes on the floor and you had to figure your way around that one. Holy cow. But anyway, we get a new, uh... Oh, I guess that's for Leo then. Yep. Alright. And, la well... Last one for now, but... Well, you'll see, viewers. You'll see. Okay, so, get down here. And this will be the last one for now. Don't worry about the enemies respawning when you go out here. They don't. It kind of reminds me of the Colossus statue in uh, Dragon Quest IV. Why is he bromide worthy? Please don't be half naked. I forget what this one looks like. Oh. <laughs> I like the look on Ruby's face. Poor Ruby. Okay, so let's uh, heal up a little bit here. 
and we're going to make some pre special preparations before heading in up there. Uh, let's see, Lamina's good, Ranfar should be good, I think. Okay, so what I want to do here, let's give, where's the Fiend Ring? Give that to you, also give the Tri Ring to Hero, everyone else, let's uh, get back on our regular stuff. Let's see, go with the uh, Healing Ring, and let's see, something that reduces uh, the Force Ring. There it is. Okay, there we go. Let's see, I think you're pretty good. Oh, right, I wanted to uh, change your crests up a bit, too. Go with the Rusty Dagger, Magic Eye. Basically, my uh, Zophar setup there. Let's see, Jean is good. Lamina, you should be pretty good there, too. Leo, yeah, we're fine. Okay, and change up my formation. And this is a strategy that you can pretty much use on just about every boss in the post game, really. Basically, just get a fiend ring on hero, use the Alfina's sword and uh, goddess crest combo. You know, let's give you a uh, warrior crest there, too. That ought to be good enough. And, yeah, so just put hero up front, and the boss really won't be able to do a whole lot to us. So, yeah, I made a save file here before when I was doing this off screen, but uh, now that didn't work out so well. Can I get this treasure first? No. They won't let me have this treasure until we have boss time! Against the Devil Eye. Okay, so, first things first. Let's go with Triple Sword. Now, this guy is going to be strong against physical attacks or anything that's non elemental, really. So, you're probably supposed to use magic against him. But I have another plan. Let's go reduce his armor, because he has a lot of defense. And let's see, heal up Hero with the Fiend Ring there. Let's get ourselves pumped up there. And Leo, I could use Earth Prayer, but I don't really need to. I'm just going to go with Soul Blade. But anyway, when you see the boss there, just kind of sitting there with his eye flashing green and blue... Uh, that means he's just going to attack someone with a uh, magical attack Get there. Power! I think. Hmm. It's kind of hard to tell between the different attacks here. Well, it is going to attack just Hero, but I forget which one exactly he's going to use. Ah, okay, that's just with the claws. Okay, that's easy enough. Yeah! yeah. Yeah, I totally recommend going with uh, physical attacks here, even though he's strong against it. Because if you got fractured armor, you can get right through that anyway. Now, if you don't have the rusty dagger, then you probably want to, uh, well, use magic there. Get a doppelganger going, another buff, and let's keep going with soul blade. I would actually not use catastrophe, catastrophe against the boss because, oddly enough, despite the in-game description saying it's omni-elemental, it's actually non-elemental, <laughs> and the boss is going to be strong against it. So, uh, if you want Lamina to contribute to the magical attack, you want her to use uh, the ice arrows. I think that's what it's called. Something like that. But anyway, yeah, when you see the boss kind of... Uh, well, his eye is also flashing green and blue there, but he's kind of moving a little faster, I guess. Yeah, he just uses that bubble attack on you. So, those two attacks, not so much of a problem. Other attacks will be more troublesome. I wonder if they have, like, a fixed AI script or something. Like, they go in a certain order? I don't think so. Okay, now when you see his eye flashing red like that, that means he's going to attack the entire party with uh, an attack there. Okay, so we're all good there. So let's go with Divine Litany on us. I don't know how you can be strong against that, but well, whatever works. And let's see. Okay, we're all buffed up here, so let's just go with good ice arrows now. And keep going with Soul Blade. Leo should probably use 
Rock Viper or Cobra or whichever one his Earth attack is. He can deal respectable damage, probably about like 300 or so. But otherwise, yeah, just go with Soul Blade. Not that I'm really worried about taking damage, because Hero's kind of soaking it all up. Taste my refreshment. Oh, the Fiend Ring is so good. Not bad, not bad. Probably going to have uh, Lamina uh, rebuff the party. Ow! But yeah, I'm probably going to have her rebuff the party every other turn or so. Just to make sure I'm not losing it. Okay, now when you see his claws being raised up like that, that means he's going to uh, try to put one of your characters to sleep. So let's see. We're good there, but I do need to heal everyone up. And we still got our doppelganger. Let's see. Let's go burn rage again. And just keep going there. I'll take care of this. And also, uh, if you don't have... The Rusty Dagger, uh, Ronfar would instead, or should, instead be using the Red Dragon Anger. K make the kitty earn its key. The dragon and fortunately, Jean's kind of screwed in this fight, no matter what you do. Oh, well. If you can call dealing hundreds of damage being screwed... I like how they have the tanking element in the game. Taste my refreshment. Although it is a bit abusive, but still, I mean, at least the boss is doing something. We're interacting with it. And yeah, that's all the attacks the boss has. It just has those four attacks. So okay, so let's go attack. There's no reason to. Uh, what is it? Lost my train of thought. I'll just go with the ice arrows. Ice storm. Now that really bothers me. I forget where I was going with that. No reason to. Uh... Blue dragon pole. Yeah, whatever. Whoa. The guy has uh, what is it? twelve thousand HP. Help so, me out, pretty kitty. yeah, it's going to take a while to take him down, even with all this stuff. Man, how sad. Red Dragon Anger deals more damage than it has to be. Oh, well. It should be Omni Elemental. I mean, look at all those attacks it uses, but oh, well. That reminds me of the Attribute 11 spell in uh, Arcana there. Okay, I should be able to get him this round, I think. Let's see. Yeah, we took a hurt in there, so we gotta heal up just in case. Um, yeah, just keep going with Lee Reckon Palm. I don't care about the doppelganger. Um, yeah, let's just keep going all out there. And there. Yeah, that ought to be good now. I like how they actually created new bosses for the epilogue instead of just throwing together some, uh, you know, palette swaps of bosses and dungeons we've already seen. So, at least they put forth the effort into it. I heard even the Sega CD version has these bonus dungeons, or most of them anyway. I know they made some exclusive ones for the PlayStation remake, but, uh, well, for the most part. But anyway, okay, so, get some more treasure. Ooh, the fourth healing ring. So now we can all get HP regen with the Althena sword there, too. Uh, Fierce Fist. From what I've heard, it's basically like the Crisis Arm in Chrono Trigger, where uh, it deals more damage the lower Jean's HP is, I think? I'm not sure. I forget. But, uh, yeah, I haven't really done a whole lot with that. You know what? I gotta really get back to what I had equipped before. Because there's going to be some random enemies left. Just one fight, but still. Be a good idea to be prepared. 
Not even using those Shiro crests on Ronfar, really. Oh well. Not much I can do about that. Okay, I think that's... Oh, I should probably change my formation there, too. Get you back up front there. Okay, that should be good. Oh, you need to heal up a little bit, too. Run far, you're slacking on the job. Why didn't you heal up before the end of that boss fight, anyway? Well, whatever. But anyway, yeah, there's just one more p place to go through. You know, now that I think about it, I don't know what the purpose of this room is. I mean, all it does is give you a way back to the start, I guess, but you could just warp out of here. There's no treasure or anything you get out of it, so... Man, I don't know. But, okay, that's everything we can do here. Let's just get out of here the old-fashioned way. Well, okay, warping isn't the old-fashioned way, but... You know what I mean, viewers. But can we find our way through the Lost Labyrinth? Find out next time on Let's Play Lunar 2. This is H.C. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day.